So let's have another discussion on the coronavirus, hydroxychloroquine, and individuals who are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar, and this is Big Discussions 76, Science and Technology. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. So I'm back with another video involving the coronavirus, hydroxychloroquine, and individuals who are deficient in the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So I want to open up this discussion by saying that there are different levels to science, or should I say different pieces, and a huge piece of science is communication, both written and oral. So communication is key uh, in the science world. Um, and also content matters. So in the current uh, crisis, which with so much information coming out, um, and as this crisis continues to unfold, there is so much information uh, coming out uh, every day and emerging. And if it's hard for the science community to keep track of everything, uh, then I would argue that it's much, much harder for the general public uh, to uh, keep track of everything that's that's coming out and so um, in the research context um, you know there there is an importance on being right because as I'll discuss in you know further future videos on my channel when I talk about my graduate school experience and what, it, what it's like being in academia you know in the research context you're competing with other labs um, around the country uh, and around the world, across the country and around the world. And so in that instance, you're racing one another to be right. But in a health crisis like this, a pandemic, um, it's important to report what's accurate and not necessarily you know, use your pride to say, uh, I'm right, I got it wrong. Now, the labs who are researching this in academia, yeah, they want to be the first ones to make the, the breakthrough finding. But for those of us who are, uh, well, creating content on some of these things, uh, it's important to be as accurate as possible because people are watching this and they're forming their own opinions and they're watching this and forming their own opinions. So I wanted to say that I wanted to open this video by saying that in this particular subject area um, in which I do not work in this subject area every day, uh, I'm a regulatory scientist um, that works with industrial chemicals. I register industrial chemicals um, and I have backgrounds in pharmacology and toxicology. In this particular instance, I'm not married to um, being right. Um, on this this topic area and I welcome any viewers who are watching this and know something that can add to this discussion to um, please add to this discussion and let me know if I've misspoken on anything or if you know there's something that needs to be added to the overall discussion so this coronavirus thing uh, hydroxychloroquine and individuals who are deficient in glucose 6 glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase, it's hard to keep saying that over and over again. Um, but it's important that the information gets, that it's communicated accurately because just like with 5G, uh, this can affect, you know, thousands and arguably millions of people. So if the wrong things get communicated, uh, it can cause a hysteria and it can cause a lots of fear and panic. So a commenter shared an article under my original hydroxychloroquine and G6 PDH. I, I 
to the abbreviation that time. So uh, a commenter shared a, an article under that video, and the uh, the comment said, "This issue has now been discussed by a prominent German doctor. See the uh, link below." So so I clicked on that link, and so basically the question at hand is um, the question at hand is does hydroxychloroquine cause uh, hemolytic anemia in patients in this instance patients who are deficient in uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and in my original video I asserted based upon what I read online that it was chloroquine that caused this effect in patients who are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and not hydroxychloroquine. So it was reported in that particular article that I read that uh, hydroxychloroquine was the safest of the two to use. And as with any medication, there are different caveats and nuances to it. So I took a look at uh, the article and the article is entitled COVID-19 a case for medical detectives and it's from the publication multipolar and it looks like this publication uh, comes out of uh, Germany and we just happen to have here the, the translated uh, version which is in English and I'm gonna leave this link in the uh, description box below so you can read it yourself and form your own ideas and even comment on what you think it's trying to say. So after I shot my video and after I read uh, this commenter's uh, comment where he or she presented the link, I wondered if I had presented wrong information in my video. And so I read over the piece, and again, I'm going to leave it in the description box below so you can read it yourself. But from what I could see, and, and from what I understood, because I sat down with my oatmeal and I tried to read it slowly, and just so I could capture what was being said. So one of the overarching arguments I think that the author was making, or was trying to make, was that uh, he did not have a lot of faith that this coronavirus pandemic is real, uh, which is interesting. Um, so that's the whole first part of the article is talking about whether or not uh, the coronavirus slash COVID-19 um, crisis slash pandemic is actually legitimate. And this person was arguing uh, that it's not. That's, that's my understanding. Go ahead and read it and let me know if you're... Um, if you take away the same thing and this is important because you know there's a you know now this person the more people who read this article or this publication and, and believe that now you have a, a growing group of people who believe that the coronavirus is a hoax versus the population that believe that it's real and we're getting lots and lots of reports that it's real but then the question is what's causing it is it a virus or is it something else well, in this publication, the author postulated, which is another word for theorized, that uh, the number of um, deaths and uh, the number of the deaths caused by respiratory uh, complications is due to individuals who um, are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and uh, it's being exacerbated by hydroxychloroquine. So the author is arguing that there's a population that's deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and the treatment with the hydroxychloroquine is going to uh, precipitate um, hemolytic anemia. And as I described in the first video, hemolytic anemia is the destruction of red blood cells uh, the patient can't get the oxygen that they need throughout their, their body and that's very very uh, toxic and uh, dangerous so you know so the, so the authors arguing that it's this um, this genetic variation combined with the drug which is now being 
looked at as a treatment for the coronavirus. So, but, you know, when I looked at the paper, when I looked through this publication, I was looking for figures and uh, data sets and uh, tables showing um, some, uh, you know, some epi data. I think that would be epi data where they're, they're actually, actually tracking patients to see if patients are getting sick from hydroxychloroquine. And I didn't see any data, uh, I didn't see any tables or any figures in there or any links to any figures or tables or any primary sources where they actually um, tracked patients and uh, determined if patients were made sick by hydro hydroxychloroquine. I didn't see that in this, in this link. And so science, at the end of the day, what science comes down to is actually proving theories and uh, ideas and theories. Um, and that's what it is, you know. You know, we see a lot of efforts now to get uh, young people, uh, minorities involved in science via things like STEAM, where you're adding an art component and, you know, you you go to science fairs and you see all these fancy gadgets and all these all these ideas but at the end of the day science is, is about answering questions it's about asking questions and answering questions where you're testing um, those questions via experiments and so I'm saying that to say that a lot of ideas and theories were expressed in this in this link that this commenter shared with me but I did not see any hard data saying that, yes, hydroxychloroquine um, increases uh, the incidence of hemolytic anemia in patients that are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Um, and that's something for the general public to keep in mind. You know, when you hear theories about something, when you hear ideas about something, you want to go back to the original sources and see if you can find the app, the actual data uh, confirming that those conclusions and theories. Now, I will say this, that the author in the paper uh, did continue to stress, he continuously stressed high doses of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, now, I will say, with my pharmacology and toxicology background, uh, the dose uh, of, a, of a given xenobiotic is significant. So, and I don't have a feel for, um, from a clinical perspective, what doses of hydroxychloroquine are high and which ones are low. And I don't have a, a, a feel for which ones are being used in, uh, in clinical settings. And I don't have a feel for how much uh, they are giving to uh, COVID-19 uh, patients, uh, because what we know, what I know, is that if you give enough of anything, it can it can kill somebody or it can make someone very sick. So yes, if you're giving high doses of something, uh, it could be Viagra, it could be a statin, it could be some sort of antihypertensive. If you give too much of it, yes, you can see some pretty bad things happen. Even for molecules that aren't designed to make bad things happen. So I'm going to stop this video here. I think it went a little longer than I wanted it to. If anyone has anything to add to this discussion, if you know something about hydroxychloroquine and patients who are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, uh, please comment in the comment section below and let us know. Again, as the content creator here, I'm not married to one particular conclusion. This has the impact to um, this whole thing, administering hydroxychloroquine to these patients, um, this has an Im the potential to, in fact, to impact thousands and thousands and even millions of people. Now, I will say this before I go. I did do a quick search, and I did see uh, a study from Duke University, the Duke University Medical School, um, and I think I saw some other publications that were linking back to the same study or, or a similar study, and I'm going to leave that link in the description box below. But this question has been asked as to whether or not patients who are deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase 
are more susceptible to uh, um, developing hemolytic anemia due to hydroxychloroquine, that question has been asked, and the data and the reporting that I saw said that there was no effect in those patients because hydroxychloroquine has been um, used for other disease states besides COVID-19. So I'm saying that to say that this question has already been asked in the clinical context. But in any case, again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you, have, if you have anything to add to this discussion. Please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. And as always remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.